Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Martin with The Contour Chemist. You guys, it's about that time. Can you guess? Holiday party time. I wish you guys could see my the color of my pants is the inspiration. I'll, I'll insert like a full picture later, but I got a towel on my lap in case I spill <laughs> on myself, but I'm dressed, ready to go. It's about two in the afternoon and I gotta get ready before my husband gets home and it's his company party tonight. So I'm gonna energy up. Oh, my favorite, so good. And we're gonna do a little holiday makeup. We're gonna do a really fun eye. I feel like if there's ever a time to have fun with your eye makeup or a bold lip or whatever your preference might be, it's holiday season. So we're gonna have fun with this look. If you wanna check it out, please keep watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and thanks for being here. I'm excited to see what we come up with. I will link everything down below. As always, can you guys guess where I got the earrings? Target. I actually saw these earrings and I was like, you know what? I already had these pair of pants. I'm obsessed with them because they're so comfy and I haven't worn them in probably years. So I saw the earrings and I was like, maybe I could make those work for the holiday. So that's what I did. I'm gonna go ahead and prep. I've got my sunscreen on, my glow screen. It is set and absorbed. I'm gonna use a little bit of lip plumper cause I tend to for special occasions. I do put on my lip conditioner first because otherwise my lips will get really inflamed and then it's hard to like color correct, but it helps if I put a little bit of that down first. I don't get nearly as swollen looking, like they turn bright red, you will see in a minute. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and prep the eyes now um, because I'm gonna do a little bit different as far as my order goes. You guys know me, I usually do my full face um, and I like to do eyes last. And for the daily, I, I always do because I don't tend to wear a whole lot of eye makeup on the daily and I, I'm pretty, good about knowing our, our shadows and how they might fall out or whatever. But anytime I'm doing a really dramatic, especially a smoky eye, for one, I always will do my eyes first so that I can clean up under here if needed, okay? So I've got my perfector prepped. It is drying while we start. I have an idea of eyeshadows we're gonna try to do some bold colors you guys know me I like I like to use what I'm wearing as inspiration I feel like that way it's never the same way twice okay I feel like I've made the mistake recently of like not letting my primer sit long enough and especially if you tend to use an an eye cream which I did today um, if you don't let your my primer kind of set, sometimes you'll get pilling uh, when you start putting on your creams over it. So, I'll show you my process of getting ready today. Took a shower, tanned, of course. Now my tan is fully developed. Lashes, um, I'm kind of like, pushing it because my daughter's going to get home from school soon. So the fastest application for me with lashes is always the Lashify SB 16s. And then I did use a plushie in the inner corner and I really like, I like the way it turned out. And then of course I did the quick wave with my hair. It's like my go-to. I don't know if I'll be able to stop using that method because it's so easy. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll link the Instagram tutorial I did down below. Okay, now that it's kind of sat and dried down a minute, I'm gonna go ahead and color correct. So the reason why I don't like to do my eyes first is because I, I feel like I have to like prep my entire eye area. And then once I put on my face, then I have to finish my under eye area. 
and it's like more steps, but sometimes it's a necessary evil to get a good look if you're gonna do a dramatic eye. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my corrector and correct around my entire eye real quick. I lied, not my whole eye, just my lid. Under here, I'm gonna have to clean up, so no no reason to waste product under there. Um, so that was my corrector mango. Now I'm just gonna go in a, just very, like barely any of my mane, just to kind of make sure it's evened out, not warm. There you go. All right, now I don't, there's my powder. I'm gonna go in with my powder brush. I'm gonna swipe so I get a nice, amount of vanilla dust so I can set that entire area generously. Do you guys ever do your eyes first and then feel like it doesn't look right because the rest of your face looks so weird? Like I already feel weird. Like my nose is like so red today, probably cause I was like cleaning out my pores. <laughs> it's gonna need a little bit of extra color correction. Look how red. My lips are getting, oh man. I also like to wait and do my brows till after I've done my highlight. Otherwise, highlight sometimes can get stuck in my brows and make them look a little bit. I cannot think of the word I'm looking for. Dingy, kind of muted. It just messes up my brows. So there we go. All right, let's see, what should we, I'm gonna try to use some colors from, which collection is it? The Midnight Kiss. So Midnight Kiss has Mama Mihiha. Uh, that's Amethyst. But then it also has this silver glitter, which is Shenandoah, which I don't know yet until I get there if I wanna do glitter on the eyes. I might wait till the very end and see if I need a touch. For now, I'm going to leave that part out. But for this, they are all mattes which is a nice variety um but they are all in the cool family which on my eyes if i use all cools it never looks right so i am gonna add uh warmth with my crease color and because i can't decide i'm just gonna use sedona because it's right here it's an it's a no fail for me um and i'm gonna kind of experiment with what how dramatic i go so i'm just gonna go ahead and pop that in the crease like I said, this is like my base. I always just start with something in the crease to carve out my eye, and then I add the fun colors. Not that Sedona is not fun. Obviously, it's my favorite. I use it for everything. Oh my gosh, my lips are like going to drive me crazy, guys. Hang on. Nothing mango can't handle. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so like I said, I'm gonna have to go back and do my under eye. And I always kind of halo. I might use a little bit, but I'm not gonna be able to finish until I'm done with my face. Because I'm gonna have to color correct under there, which is gonna take away some of that. But I'm a visual person. If I don't put anything there and I'm doing my eyes, it'll look off the whole time for me and then I won't be able to tell when I'm finished. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and use Mama on the lid with the smudge brush. So Mama's just this pale pink matte. I'll be honest guys, it barely shows pink on me. It's very, very neutral almost because it's almost like the color of my lid. It doesn't change much for me. Like I could probably use, it's kind of like just a pinker version of chai. If I really build it up, you can see the pink a little bit more, but I think it'll tie in nicely with the other shades once it's fully done. When they're in the same color family, okay? Now I'm gonna go into amethyst. Amethyst, can I talk? 
with the other side of the smudge brush and I'm going to start building this up and use this to kind of smoke it out. So we're, first, we're just going to keep it simple. Outer corner into the actual crease. If you ever want to try a smoky eye, this is a great color to start with. This one or London. London's just a little bit lighter, but I feel like they're smoky without being too gray. So they're a little bit easier to blend out than just a straight up gray like coal, but they're not too purple. Like they look really pretty with all eye colors. Cool thing about doing your eyes first is you can really clean up this outer corner if that's an issue for you. And we can take a makeup wipe after and just clean it up. You don't have to worry about it so much right now. So I'm gonna try to use Mihiha for just like a pop of color. So I'm just gonna use the eyeshadow brush. I feel like this one is so pigmented that I gotta be real light handed with it. And a little bit more strategic about where I place it. Like I wanna be able to see that color with my eyes open. So we're talking like high point above the crease on that hood. You see that? Not nearly as vibrant as it looks in the 10 when you're just a little bit more sparingly with it. But it does seem to really get on the brush easily. Okay, like you can tell, I got more over here hardest part with this when you can really see color is to keep them even okay you can always use your kind of magic eraser shade help tone down since it's hard to take away right okay now that I've got that there I'm gonna go back in with Sedona kind of in between the two because you guys remember when you have a lot of cool shades, even though technically pink is on the warm side, pinks in my opinion can go both warm or cool, especially depending on skin tone. So if you tend to have any issues with this blending or looking seamless, use that warmer shade in between the two. I tend to get a little patchy when I use all cool colors. I don't know what it is about my eyes. So I'll just take a little bit of that Sedona between the two just to kind of make sure that's all more seamless. Does that make sense? And then again, the same thing with Chai on that inner corner if needed. It's also really hard to do a smoky eye without the bottom lashes. Just right now, it just looks unbalanced. So instead of the glitter, I'm gonna use a little bit of my all-time favorite pink, which is Tawanda. So this shade, you can either put it on more heavy and it's gonna have that rose gold kind of duochrome look, or you can just use the eyeshadow brush and use it like on this side and just kind of put a nice little wash over that mama and it's gonna just kind of barely catch the light. Either way, it's beautiful. I'm gonna kind of press it on a little bit heavier since I'm not sure if I'm gonna put a glitter over that yet or not. Just so it's got a little bit of that shift, okay? Then I'm gonna get off the excess because I just used it and kind of blend that out. Now again, I touched my crease so if you need to go back into Sedona and mattify that again.
Okay, and if you feel like you got some on your outer corner, you can always build up that color a little more as well. I tend to always go back in and it's just kind of like the rest of my face. I slowly build up until it's the way I like it. Because sometimes you get to the layering eyeshadows or one eyeshadow kind of overlaps with the other and then you can't see it and it kind of all starts melding together. You can easily just kind of press on more where needed and then do a gentle blend to make sure you don't have any harsh lines. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add liner so I can see what that does. Like I said, every step is a process. So I'm gonna use a little bit of Black Friday and just press it along the upper lash line only. Okay, kind of, I put a little bit of a wing just to give a little bit more of a length, elongating effect, is that the word, to the eye. Um, now I'm gonna go over it with coal eyeshadow. This will set it and it's also going to let me kind of smoke it out a little bit. Since we kind of want that more smoked out look, you can be a little bit more messy with the coal eyeshadow. You don't need it so precise. I love the depth that gives the lash line. I feel like it makes my eyelashes look so thick and these are not like the boldest lash ever, but they look a lot more bold. Now, with that eyeliner technique. Hey, if you want a little bit more drama, I would say sparingly, you can use coal to add even more depth to your outer corner. It will almost just like deepen that amethyst. It is it is much darker. Well, this is amethyst and this is coal. So both are cool. Both will give that smoky look. But since it's nighttime, I feel like sometimes I just don't get the opportunity to, to do so much of a dramatic eye. And they can be so much fun, right? So again, I'm just slowly building up if I feel like I need a little bit more color anywhere. Just a little bit more of that me. Hee ha, hee ha, whatever. <laughs> I know I'm gonna get corrected by my Spanish speakers out there. Guys, I took Spanish all through college and I still can't speak it. <laughs> As predicted, I have fallout and it's a little messy. So, what have I not done? I have not brightened. I gotta clean this up first. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean it up so that way we can go ahead and do our under eyes and then finish off the eyes. I feel like this type of smoky eye where you have nothing on the lash line can almost close off your eyes and make them look smaller. Do you see how hooded my eyes look? Like they look heavy on top because there's no balance. I have no definition along the bottom. No, no bueno. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a wipe and wipe under my eyes all the way. Gosh, I have it like all over my nose. And I don't have a lot, could have been much worse. I'm gonna go ahead and take that all under my eyes, all the way on the side, and we can always buff that out, okay? So I almost think of it like a straight line. Um, and if you do want a cat eye, this is your perfect time to use your fingernail, kind of cat eye that out. to get that crisp cat eye. Okay, 
Let's do some face, shall we? I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry. I'm gonna try to do this more quickly because I'm losing light here in the Midwest. All right, let's go ahead and do some 3D foundation, shall we? I got my trusty color corrector. Um, and I'm gonna go in with my blush brush. I'm gonna kinda just barely tap, 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 because this mango is pretty dried out after, I don't even know, four months I might have been using that one. Okay, I'm just hitting the darkest points. If you can tell, my entire face is darker than my neck and chest, okay? What that means is if I were to use a color that matched my chest, this would not last all night. It would start wearing off and breaking up, okay? So I have to hit my entire face, even if it doesn't need color correction, okay? Because we're matching the darkest points. And it's just kind of a anomaly, I would call it, of how 3D foundation works. Uh, we kind of discovered it years into being artists. <laughs> Color makes all the difference in the world when it comes to longevity. Okay, once I kind of hit everywhere, I got a nice base. I don't really need a bronzer base. That would just pull me even darker. So I'm not gonna use that. I'm gonna keep using my color corrector and this time I'm gonna use the blend brush and I'm gonna tap in and I'm gonna actually hit those points that need color correction. So in here where that big brush couldn't hit, I'm gonna buff on and color correct my broken capillaries. Since I wiped off a lot, I'm gonna go back into that inner corner I can see the blue and purple coming back out in between the brows. I get a little bit red. My entire nose is the darkest part of my face. So I tend to have to press on more everywhere because I've got a lot of dark spots that will show through if I don't. So hyperpigmentation, it's a beast, right? Okay, I tend to have the most amount of my rosacea right here. I'm gonna hit that a little bit more, just so that doesn't start peeking out. Right here, got a blemish right there and some texture. Again, texture is something that you wanna hit with your darkest shade. Got a little bit of melasma there, 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 everywhere. Okay, and then I'm gonna do a nice thin amount under the eye. Kind of even that out. You see how naturally light, even though I've got a lot of blue and purple and darkness shining through, it's also just lighter than the rest of my face, which can tend to just make me look really uneven as, at the same time. So also going to add color. So color correction isn't always for darker areas. Sometimes if you are lacking pigment, you need to add pigment with a lighter, or sorry, add pigment with a darker color than the area you're putting it to. So like scarring vitiligo, vitiligo. Gosh, I can never remember how to say that. I think it's vitiligo. All works very similarly. All right, so now I feel like I'm looking really dark compared to the rest of myself. So now is where I use my main shade to stay matching. So I'm gonna go back to this brush and I'm gonna hit my main, which is lighter than my corrector, more neutral. So it's going to help tone down some of this warmth and it's gonna kinda build up my coverage on all these areas as I'm slowly toning down that 
area. So I'm just pressing it. I don't want to move what I just put down. I want to build up coverage, not buff it away. So barely tap, tap. I barely touch my creams. You guys saw how very little it takes. I am going for a little bit more medium coverage. I feel like, I don't know. Winter time is the time I don't tend to like be like very, very little coverage let my skin show through. I like a little bit more medium coverage, especially for an event. So I'm gonna go back to that detailed brush. Same thing, just make sure I didn't miss any spots and press on where I need more coverage. All right, it is time to contour my ride or die detail. I'm gonna go ahead and use Astoria. Tap, tap, tap. Get it on about half the brush and then press this on to add back that dimension and that 3D look. So I'm just pressing it on to about the corner of my eye. Then I'm tapping upward so I'm not moving any of that correction to blend it out. You can lightly flick. You can pick back up that brush and soften the line. Make sure it has a nice blend as you go towards your mouth. We don't want any collection in the smile lines. Same thing. For the forehead, tap along the hairline and push it up into the hairline. And down into the highlight so it fades so we don't have any lines there. Okay, just kind of frame the face. under that jawline. Disguise jowls if needed. Down the neck. Okay, nose contour. Gonna just kind of wiggle, wiggle. One straight line. Two straight lines, flip it over. Blend up towards the brows. Tip of the nose. To shorten under the lips. Make them look a little bit powdier if you need that, like me. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit of bronzer now. Look at my face. My face does not need it, but I feel like this does. So I got my Bella, my glow. I'm just going to swirl into my glow illuminator, my Bella bronzer. I'm just gonna add a little bit of color not much. I don't feel like they're far apart. <laughs> but I love glow on the collarbones when you're wearing something that you can see your collarbones. I put a little bit down the neck. This will tone down slightly once I perfect, but I'm not quite there yet but I don't feel like I'm gonna need 
any on my face. I really don't think I'm gonna need any, so I'm gonna skip it for my face. Let's go ahead and brighten. Blend brush again, this time the lightest shade. And, and since I nose contoured, I'm gonna hit all the way up to that contour line right there. That's gonna immediately slim my nose. Hit the darkest part, part of my under eye, which is right there. And then I'm gonna go all the way over here to kind of give more coverage on that dark spot and the hyperpigmentation that kind of sits along my eye bone, orbital bone, <laughs> whatever it's called. Okay, and then I avoid everything above that. Does that make sense? I don't need excess product where I have the most texture. So just about right here and through this area. Same thing over here. Concentrated on the side of my nose, avoiding this area which has more texture. Now this side of my eye has more of a shadow right here and I have more hyperpigmentation closer to my eye, so I tend to put it a little bit higher. Again, our eyes are different. They're not gonna be identical, so do what works for your face. A little on the chin. I'm gonna put very little right here just because it's a texture area for me. And down the stripes. All right, I'm in desperate need of this bad boy because it looks so heavy right now. So we're gonna use the perfector on the full face to get remove to get removed to get remove excess <laughs> to remove excess. So small lines. We're gonna soften the nose contour. Anywhere cranes have collected, but mostly under those eyes where I layered more product to get more coverage. So much better. Don't forget to keep turning your perfector. If you feel like it's warm touching your face, then it needs to be turned in order to keep picking up product. So much better. Okay, I immediately powder. Immediately set that area to avoid <laughs> creasing. So I'm just gonna touch my powder, my vanilla dust. I'm gonna go all the way up to that lash line. Again, if you tend to have transfer or anything to that lower lash line, you're not fully setting. So go ahead and go all the way up to that lash line. Since our creams do not set by themselves. Now, depending on the look you want, you can pull out your loose powder or you can just use this. I like to have a little bit of glow still shining through. It's because I like a dewy finish. So I'm gonna just set where I want a little bit less shine. My brows tend to be shiny. And then anywhere I want to not crease. All right. Finally, lip and cheek time. I do want to use a more bold color, but I don't want it to conflict too much with my eyes. But I really, after doing that reel, showing all the confection collection concoctions I made up, I really wanted to try the plum and sangria combo on my cheek. I'm gonna attempt without mixing it on the hand, just to dip in both and then maybe blending on the hand to see if I can get a similar combo. That's really pretty. But I just want like a nice wash. 
I don't want it super bold to conflict with the eyes. So just the general tone. I'm just kind of blending it on the hand. That way I know I don't have like a concentration of either color on the brush because then I'd have to work on blending it out and then I'll move my corrector. It's pretty. And since I literally cannot do anything without adding a little bit of glow, I'm gonna cheat, you guys. I'm picking up my favorite shade of all time, which you can't get right now, but I'm trying to think if by the time this video comes out, if I'll have released it yet. I'm not sure, but I do know I have two different giveaways in my 12 days of giveaways that are happening this month on IG and Facebook and some here on YouTube. And I have two that I'm giving away one of these shades. So you do have two chances to get it, but it's Sunshine State. And I'm gonna use Sunshine State to top this color because I feel like I just need a little glow and this is literally my favorite shade of all time to just give that glow to the cheek. Do you see that? I literally, it can't be replicated. It's just so pretty. So, Sunshine State, it was a limited edition shade. I'm sure it will come back hopefully with the shade of the month again this next year, but for now, Make sure you enter that giveaway so you can enter to win one. Last but not least, I'm gonna use a perfume. And this is, I think, number three. So in rose gold, I'm just gonna hit upper cheekbones right there. And since it's a perfume, again, I like to hit collarbones and you can smell it win-win right so the midnight his collection comes with Frenchie I'll be honest I don't feel like Frenchie goes with this vibe if I do it on my lips so I'm not gonna use that but I am gonna go ahead and contour my lips with my contour or line them um real quick with the multitasker And I feel like, because I got some color on my eyes and my cheeks, I feel like I need something neutral, glossy. These are all three of my ride or dies. I'll be honest, I feel like they're all very similar, slightly different, but any three of these, I would have also probably topped this lip and cheek combo with. Wouldn't have given the shimmer, but it would have given the glow that I like. And so these three, I top everything with. Um, if I don't want to change a color, but I want that glow factor, the, sh the sheen, the dewy look, I use one of these. So we have Boardwalk, Sadie, and Desert Sunset. So Boardwalk, Sadie, Desert Sunset. Boardwalk, Sadie, Desert Sunset. Can you see how similar they are? Okay, Sadie is the most neutral. Um, Boardwalk has a little bit more peach in it. Desert Sunset has a little bit more pink in it. All three are can be so sheared out, yet can also be built up to add, and you'll see more of that underlying tone, but all three are beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and just add Sadie to keep it neutral. Mm. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of Desert Sunset because I feel like that was a little bit too neutral. <laughs> and hence how I make up shades. You can always take a little bit of Sangria and just barely touch it because it's such a, like a stain and then tap it over that gloss 
and it will give the same tone to that color. I feel like sometimes it ties it in really nicely. Okay, lips are done. Finally, let's finish the eyes, finally. All right, first of all, I'm gonna take Sedona and I'm gonna run it under the eyes. You're gonna notice what a difference it does. Just to add some definition under the eyes. Especially when you're doing a smoky eye. Okay, I'm also gonna use this brush to kind of blur out and use a little bit of Sedona to kind of blur out that outer edge. Because since we used the wipe, it made it too harsh. You never want that perfectly straight line. You always want a nice blur. Or you can use Chai or whatever your magic eraser shade might be. Oh my gosh, I haven't done my brows, guys. No wonder I'm like, wow, my face looks off. Okay, BRB, I'm gonna use Trust and the line brush real quick. Okay, so much better. You might have not even noticed. I just tinted them yesterday, so they weren't super light, but they were so like, I don't know, almost grayish. I don't know. They look better. Yeah, I'm happy now. Okay, I'm gonna so, use a little bit of that Mihiha under. Okay, blend it out. Try if needed. See, look how much better already. Oh my gosh. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with the multitasker and amethyst. And we're just gonna touch the side. Now this is a pretty dark color, so I'm gonna start just at the outer corner. and just slowly build up, working it towards that center and not going past that. Okay, I'm gonna make sure I'm pulling it all the way up outer corner. And that's what gives it some smoke without looking like a raccoon, right? Slowly build, okay? So, outside corner, a little bit more. Slowly start bringing it in, keeping it really soft. Softer, the better when it comes to mature eyes. Okay. All the way up on that outer corner, okay? If you need to use this brush, Blends out really nicely. Okay, or you can tone down by using some of your magic eraser shade. I feel like I don't even need to use coal in the outside corner. I thought I was gonna have to. If you wanna try it, you can use maybe just the small end of the multitasker and just kind of stick to literally just that outside corner, like no farther than there. See that? 
and then you can make sure that wing is still set after you took a wipe to it. I didn't tap off excess, so now I got fallout. Use a big fluffy brush. You usually can just wipe it away really easily or tap it out. Beauty of creams, <laughs> you don't have to start over. All these dark colors, you're gonna be more prone to fallout, so just know that. Okay, we're almost done. Let's brighten. And instead of using the same brightener I always do, let's use a papau color. Um, my go-to when I want way more is gonna be Soulmate. And especially because we got those pink tones going on, I'm gonna pick up the small end, Soulmate, and hit that inner corner right there. There. Sometimes uh, it can be a little bit much for my under the brows, but let's go ahead and try it. I'm gonna pick up the multitasker. Make sure I don't get too much. Keep it really high. See how much that. Sometimes it's just fun to wear something different. Doesn't have to be so natural all the time, right? Which tends to be my go-to. Always, always finish a smoky eye with loads of mascara on the bottom lashes. It will never look complete until you do, I promise. All right, friends. There we go. There is our finished dramatic pink and purple smoky holiday look. What do you guys think? You can do it. I know you can. So fun. Get out of your comfort zone a little bit for this holiday season. Hopefully you have something you can do some fun eye makeup for. Or just rock a beautiful neutral eye and a bold lip. That would also be fun. Since mine is a dinner, my lips won't last. I know that. So I'm going to go neutral and bold, which is my favorite. I hope that was helpful and you learn something new. If you're needing help with your 3D foundation or even demi color, I'd be happy to color match you or help you troubleshoot. Make sure you have the proper shades. My color match request is in the drop box below the video. Just click the little arrow, it'll open up and you can fill it out. Let me know exactly how you wanna wear your makeup so I can send you your own custom color match. And be sure to go over and follow me on Instagram or join my Facebook VIP group for the 12 days of giveaways. I know I have a smoky eye kit and you can actually win and pick out any eyeshadows you want to create a smoky eye. So you could pick these or Midnight Kiss, which I kind of changed a little bit and I didn't go with the glitter, but I don't feel like it really needs it. If it was New Year's, I would definitely have glittered it up. But Midnight Kiss is a collection that is actually reduced Part of the four recreate the looks for the holidays and it will be available in December and it's a discounted collection. So check that out and the three other collections. I think I've done one other one over here on YouTube and I'm sharing the other ones over on Insta. If you have any questions over the collections, just let me know. Or if you want to see them in a certain way, I love to hear suggestions from you guys as, well. as always. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you. Bye. See you next week.